I'm getting ready to show you how um, we're making these garden garden sun catchers with Mirini. I'm going to show you how we put these together and what all I'm using on these and invite you to watch, invite you to subscribe, to subscribe and ask a question. We're live right now and this will be up on our YouTube channel always. These are ones that I have done. I'm going to show you show you what show you how we're doing this here. So the first thing that I did was I took this clear panel and I used paint. This may or may not be this kind of paint. We make our own paint too. We take um, powdered powdered um, glass, mix it with aloe. So this I might have filled this up again. But um, the first thing we do is is I draw some little designs on here. And then I sprinkled this with some um, different kinds and colors of frit. That's step number one. Now this one is going to have a back to it. It's going to be an opaque opalescent back. It's going to go be like this. So it, it won't um, it won't be the whole way on the back. It will have a, a really cool edge to it. So I'm going to set this up on something as we're working on it. Set it up on, let's set it up on this. And, oh, no, too big, too big. We'll set it up on this. So I like to do that so then I can I can pick it up easily. So these are gonna be sun catchers. And lots of people do fuse glass and lots of people do fuse glass differently. So. If you do yours a little bit different than mine, that's totally cool. I've been um, in love with glass all my life. I've been working with glass for the last two decades. I love it. And the first thing I'm going to do is take a wire here. Now this wire, I get it in a spool and I cut my own, um, it's, um, high temp wire so it can take being fused. I cut my own to length. I shape them. Some of them I give a little curly cues to like that one there but this one I just want a straight one here. So and it is so windy here. If you hear noises here we're, in, we're working in this studio that I call the cemetery studio. I'll show you here we have a cemetery outside there. <laughs> And we're in a 150-year-old church, but it is so windy. The, the roof sounds like it's going to come off. Hopefully it won't. So I'm going to take just regular white glue here. And a lot of people um, use different things to fix it on. I have always used white glue. <laughs> it has never gotten weird for me. There is... Um, there's some really expensive glue you can use that's made just for this. It claims that it burns off fire finer. It might. I don't even, I don't know. I don't know. I've never used it. I know this works perfect for me. <laughs> and this is 99 cents. <laughs> well, a little more now. 125. <laughs> so the first thing I'm going to do is take this clear and put it on top of here. So now we're going to have an opaque background here. We'll line this up. The glue burns away in the kiln. The mark burns away in the kiln. The 30 that's there, that is just, um, that's a Sharpie. And it will, it, I promise it disappears in the kiln. Everything in the kiln goes smooth and lovely and beautiful. So um, the first thing that we're going to do here is we're going to put some um, Scottish thistles on. These, all of these ones that I'm doing here, up there you can see them. The ones that I'm doing, they're all going to be the same but different. <laughs> I want, I like that big orange flower we have on each. That's with Vitrograph. And um, they're all different. I painted them all different. I love, I love uh, one of kind projects. So, even though these these sun catchers are kind of like from a collection, they're all going to be a little different. 
So I'm going to grab, these are little, um, these are little, the straights that we pull out of our vitrograph kiln. <laughs> so I, I separate this, the straight pieces. We're going to start with this little piece here. And I'm going to open my purple glass, which is little weird glass paint. Um, this is glass paint that we make and put inside of these. And this has always been gunky. It's my fault. I got the mix wrong, but it still works out okay. Uh, this is powdered glass, powdered glass and aloe vera. I used to make this paint. So I'm gonna stir this on our glass stick and I'm gonna bring it right up to the top. I'm a professional artist and crafter. I've been earning my living selling my arts and crafts my whole adult life and I don't like to waste anything. <laughs> so some people will squeeze this out onto a palette. You do whatever makes you happy. So these I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually, let's turn these into big purple mushrooms. Let's do that on this one. Actually, you know what? They look like thistles, don't they? Forget the mushrooms, we'll make them at the bottom. Let's turn this into our thistle. Oh, that's what, that's, this one's gonna be beautiful. That's our Scottish thistle right there. And I'll get some of these spikes up. Put a little one over here. Smaller one there. Because that big orange flower is gonna be the star of the show. But these thistles are gonna look really pretty too. So I'm gonna paint that on. Now I'm gonna wipe this off. Wipe this off. And I have a little bit of my bottom, this bottom part sticking out right here along the edge. I'm gonna get that right to where it needs to be. And this one is, a, this sticks a little bit thicker so I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna cut this about there. Normally I can snap it with my fingers. I can't do that on these. They're a little too thick. So I'm gonna take this piece here. I got this purple paint on my fingers. I'm just gonna dab some here. A little purple. Little purple, they'll be cool little feels. Remember I said I don't like to waste anything? <laughs> I don't like to waste anything. Okay, that's there. Now this little stick has paint on it. I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna do this. I'm just gonna sprinkle some of these little yellows on here. I love yellow and purple. They're complementary colors. Just gonna sprinkle a couple in there. Love it. I'm gonna put that right down here at the bottom. Down there. I just want to stick to my, there. Perfect. Oh, I always, 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 always tell people when I'm teaching workshops, put your lid back on. <laughs> These little fiddly bits, if you don't put your lid back on as you're working, you're going to regret it. <laughs> you're going to regret it. So I'm um, going to close this lid tightly. That paint will dry out. See how this is dried out here? This will dry out. You can still use it. I might just break some off and fleck it around the bottom. Again, to get these little purple feels. That'll fuse really pretty. Uh, but now here, while these, while these are wet, while our paint is wet here for our thistles, I'm gonna take this, is this incredibly beautiful purple mix that I made of Frit. There, it's mostly purple, but you'll see some specks in here of this beautiful cobalt blue. It's just gorgeous. So I'm gonna take and put a little bit of this on our thistle. Oh, that was a lot. Put a little bit on this thistle. <laughs> I 
again a lot. Don't worry, I'm gonna show you how to clean that up. Down here, I'm gonna just, a couple little purple flecks. Put the lid on, I always put that lid on. And um, this is just a little spoon that I use. For, I use it for everything and it has some glue or it has some little hunks on it. I let them dry and then they'll peel right off. These are little hunks of um, <laughs> glass paint, whatever. But since we're having a little garden floor here, they're gonna look great. Okay, so this part, I'm gonna take a super fine paintbrush and um, just take this and I'll brush in all my little, all my little purple. Be careful you don't touch your paint. If you touch the, the glass paint, you'll get purple on the brush and then you'll be spreading that all over the glass. So I just want to get all my purple over off the middle. If a little, if a, if a flake or two is on there, I'm good with that. But I just really want all that purple to be right on the flower and not on this green stem. Get it to where you're happy with it. Get it to what feels good for you. This is, this is all about what feels good for you doing this. Okay, now this little stick here has a little bit of purple on it. I'm gonna take a little bit of glue and put right on the end of this. This is gonna look so pretty. Little bit of glue right on the end. And I kind of spin it to keep that little glue ball there. So then this, this is a mix that I made of really pretty blue. I'm gonna tap it in there. You just have to worry about the one side. I'm gonna stick this here just to be another, like a 3D flower feel coming up there. Put it over there a little bit. It also might end up looking like a tall blue mushroom. It's gonna be beautiful. <laughs> whatever it is on our little garden floor and you haven't seen anything yet you're not going to you're not going to believe what we get into next okay so we have our little and i readjusted that so i got to pull my little hanger out here the hanger has got to be sandwiched it has to be sandwiched between the pieces of glass so i'm going to take this glue and i'm going to put some here just to catch that little stick that we put on. We don't want anything moving. I'm going to put some little pebbles down here. Now these, I have already fused them. They've already been in the kiln to turn into these cool little shapes. And I've cut them in half and now I'm going to put, I'm going to put some of those on each side. Maybe a little round. That one is definitely a lovely little pebble shape. And put a couple pebbles on each side. Some of them are different colors. I dropped that one down in my Morton. This, my cutting system here is called a Morton cutting system. I don't really use it, but I like this thing catches my little bits of glass for me. I'm going to take that one and put that one there. Just wanted to feel like little rocks on each side. Okay, now, uh, what comes next? Oh, let's get in here with this specialty Murini. So Murini is a uh, glass tube. I, I pull it in big, giant strands out of our kiln here. Big, giant strands that look like this. Um, they're called stringers. You chop it in half, chop it up. And you can see, let me get a bigger one. You can see down through it. See down, come on, you See all the colors and stuff down through? There we go. And then I chop it up and I use it, I use it in this. I use it to make glass. So here, I'm gonna put a couple different things. I'm gonna put a um, dragonfly. I'm going to put a bumblebee 
And I'm gonna put two ladybugs. Martin, my husband is from Scotland and he calls these ladybirds, which cracks me up. I always tell him they're not a bird, they're a bug. <laughs> So I gotta think about where I wanna put them. So I want them to be a little star. I think we'll put our dragonfly up here. I think we'll put our little bumblebee here. And again, remember, 80 is gonna disappear. And let's put one little ladybug here on that branch. And we'll put the other one up here on that branch. Just a little dab of glue will do. Okay, so now I want to use, this is Mirini that I made this orange. I want to make a big orange flower. So I want to find a piece that'll be long enough to get me about five, five pieces out of. So I'm going to scoop this over here. Put our brush out of the way. I like to keep my work area as tidy as possible. If you don't keep your work area tidy, that's cool. So I like to, these are little nippers and I like to um, tell people, remember, keep the wheels up because this is going to projectile shoot down. So I'm just holding. And nipping these. That one nipped weird. But I need a couple of slices to make our big orange flower. These are gonna be the petals of. I would need to be about three mil thick. mill thick. And I think it's not only going to look like a flower, I think it's going to look like sunshine. Too. I don't want flying. Retrieved it. I'm going to do a couple more up because I have a lot of these to make. That's good enough. Now, um, oops, and I bumped this off. This is why you wanna keep things tidy and keep them out of your way when you're doing other projects like chopping things off. Okay. And I like to, I like to set my project on something like this so I can move it and turn it without actually touching it. It's like a little made it on straight. Now it's straight. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is take, um, I'm going to take yellow. We want to put some yellow. Yellow is going to really make some cool things happen here. I'm going to put some little yellow blossoms around like their little yellow buds maybe. That one drug out a little bit. Maybe we'll go inside of these little the little drawings that I do did. Maybe some inside, maybe some outside. But we want a lot of these yellows. And then I think right here right here I want a pretty big spot. I'll show you why in a minute. Okay, now I'm going to take I took my glue first, put my glue down first. And now this is yellow glass that um, Morton grinds this glass up for me and then we sort it out. We have these cool little um, sifting, sifting containers that we use. So I'm gonna take some of this and I'm just gonna put it here in the glass, in the blobs of glass of glue. <laughs> oh my gosh, I really can speak. And that noise you're hearing is my stomach growling. Hungry. Cold, windy day. 
perfect to be in the studio. Okay, put your lid on. Always put your lid on. And then I'm gonna get our little paintbrush back here because we wanna do fine detail work. And if we let these little yellow bits just hang out all over here, it, it's not gonna give us our, our lovely little, we want a lovely little yellow center for our flower. I think I'm gonna move this ladybug just down here, just a little bit, so it won't, it won't, um, they won't um, fight for attention. No fighting here. Lovely, lovely crafts. Getting all my yellow in. Pulling it all in together, getting it into that glue. The yellow by the purple looks amazing. It looks so pretty. I'm gonna just get our little yellow buds in. And we're gonna make one flower. You know that first flower in your garden that blooms early? That's what this is. That might just be the name for these. This might just be called First Bloom. Because that's going to be our little showstopper. These ones kind of went all over the place. Let's get them into their little clumps. All these little individual. These are, these are time consuming, but these are so worth it. These are so pretty when they're done. And what I love about them is, even though it's the same theme, they're all different. I did everything freehand. Everything is uh, one of a kind. I love original stuff. And these definitely do that. Just gonna pile those up a little bit. So now this flower that we're making, we're um, I'm gonna put this. There's a couple little yellows. I'm just gonna dot them down here. They'll stay down there. Just a couple of these little yellows. Not many. Oh, that slipped. There's some of these down there. Okay, so now that the orange that we're gonna take and that oh that one's already looking so beautiful oh push the it push this off because it excels air I forgot to do that gonna put a little ring around those posies and now I'm gonna start putting our little orange into place it's our little orange sunshine flower How many petals will we have? I don't know. It depends on how big we make that center. That center is pretty big. And these petals, the cool thing about this vitrograph is, well, one of the cool things, it's kind of all different shapes and the different thicknesses, like that one's a bit thicker there, that it'll make that petal bigger. Just want to make sure we're standing up on our end there. Same with this one, a little bit bigger petal. And what will happen from an artist's point of view, when this melts, these petals will be a little bit bigger, they'll look more dimensional. It, this is going to be, I can't tell you how beautiful this is going to be. See, there we got a little bit of purple. Let's get it out of there, that little bit of purple. It's funny how that little bit can like make a difference. <laughs> Not for the better. Let's put them up there. Usually I put my little extra bits down here. There we go. Okay, I think we got room for one more. Just finding the right one here. Oh, oh, we got a real big one. Let's use this real, well, let's put him in and see what he looks like. He might be too big. He might be too big. I don't want to... 
Maybe if we... Oh, I think that'll be okay. All right. Okay, now I have... Um, showed you the mushroom. Oh, I have this. these cool. Look at these. These little mirini, they almost look like little eyes. They are so cool. So I'm going to take one and put it up here. It's going to hide our wire. So we're going to put one of those up here. This one here. They look so cool when they're fused. So down here now, I have these little... I have these little red bits. I'm not listening to my own advice. Always start to squeeze this off. I'm going to put this up here. This is going to make a little mushroom for us. Definitely make a little mushroom for us. I'm just going to take a tiny little piece of pink here to put down at the bottom for the stem. You can use a little stick, use a little paintbrush, whatever, to get that situated in so we got let's let's go over everything we got in here we got a mushroom we have a big sunshine flower we have a dragonfly butter or bumblebee two little ladybugs two little ladybugs pull this one down here a little bit more so we want them to stand out let's put that one up there um thistles we have little golden rods little golden blooms we have some pebbles. Uh, we have this, the stick with the crystal glass on the end. That's this beautiful blue. Not sure what's going to happen there yet, but we need one more thing here. <laughs> I have this cool blue. So I'm going to take a... Oh, yep, that one now. See, it has a bright center to it. I'm going to take this piece. It's about maybe an inch long. I'm going to scoot this out of my way here so I don't bump things. And because I'm always bumping things, I'm going to grab a, a little empty drawer here to work in. I love working in these little fidgety drawers. It's a good way, it's a good way to store your glass. So this guy I'm going to take and I'm going to cut. About three mil, about three mil thick. We have a big chopper that Martin invented. That we have a we have a uh, YouTube up about that. It's very cool. So I have these pretty pretty little blues. So what I want to do here is take a line of glue. Let me see where I want to put it. I want to put it up here. I'm gonna put it up here at the top. I'm gonna put it right up here at the top. I'm gonna to take a little little line of glue here, and I'm gonna curve it around. Just gonna curve it right around. We don't know the name of this flower. <laughs> we don't know how this flower got in the garden, but boy, are we glad it did. Almost like little magic bluebells here. This is gonna be. So pretty. And remember, the glue will burn away, but the glass just melts into itself. So it will all melt, like, just so gorgeous. This was a full fuse. I'm actually doing this like a tack fuse. Don't have anything here to show you what that looks like, but take my word, it's gorgeous. Blue. You're just gonna see a real pretty little, little line, a little almost like a little shepherd's hook of um, dainty little flowers that will be here. And these ones, these ones probably won't make it to the website. I'm only making so many of these. And they'll probably just be sold on one of our lives. One of our TikTok lives. A little tiny bit of glass right there. 
I'm just going to tuck it down in there. It just adds interest and makes it interesting. And I think those are all of our elements in this one, I think. I'm going to just finish this by squeezing it off so that air blows out. So air doesn't blow everything around. And then I'm just going to sort of just give it a little bit of extra just to make sure things don't shift between here and the kiln. And that's it. 14 hours later in the kiln and we will have something so gorgeous, something so unique. And when you hang it in your window, it's gonna be forever a beautiful garden. The best kind of flowers to take care of. I hope you enjoyed this and thanks so much for watching. I hope you learned something. If you have any questions, please ask. I love answering questions on YouTube. I love it. I love your comments. Um, make sure you give it a thumbs up and make sure that you subscribe. Don't even know how you do that on here. Where, where to point to. Subscribe to our channel and keep watching. Bye.